Right, good morning everyone. Something for a little bit sad time for something a little bit different. So sorry I've not been online for a while streaming. Uh, lots of things have been happening at home, work, rest of it, so uh, just not really had time to do much at all. And uh, I blitzed the PC. PC wasn't particularly working very well. So uh, I had to nuke it and uh, the flight sim, Microsoft flight sim, just isn't working particularly well anymore. So I've just sort of abandoned it and uh, I may give it another go at some point. But anyway, I've come back to something different, uh, which is going to be recordings from now on rather than live streams because uh, I just don't really trust my PC to do live streaming anymore. Um, so it's going to be a recording. This is uh, B17, the Mighty 8th. Many of you have probably seen it before. This is the Redux version. And what I've done is I've started this as a campaign as the Squadron Commander. Uh, and we are the 381st Group and 532nd Squadron based at Ridgewood. So I've done a little bit of research on this. I'm trying to do this. Uh, I'm going to try and do a few videos where I can replicate in the missions that they flew. So there's Ridgewell in sort of East Anglia way. Uh, and I'm going to try and do the missions that they did uh, as historically as possible. Now, of course, the benefit of doing a squadron commander is you can actually brief and design your own missions, which I've done, so I've set a route up. Uh, I'm going to talk through various things along the way. Hopefully, this won't be too long a video, maybe half hour or so. But it's going to talk about a few things, just navigation, the crew management, and uh, certainly bombing as well, because uh, I've read on forums lots of people uh, have had various issues with uh, bombing and accuracy. And I've often said on some forums, the rest of it, it's not the game, it's just you can't bomb for toffee. Um, so I'm going to try and go through what I do for bombing um, to show you accuracy and obviously we can talk about the route at some point as well. So this was, I think the date is the 1st of December uh, 1943 and on this particular day uh, this bomber group actually bombed something in Leverkusen which is somewhere around here near Dusseldorf so it might have been an all production facility, I'm not too sure but uh, that's not uh, a target that appears on here so I've just gone for Cologne and uh, I think our primary target is the Marshalling Yard, then we've got a rail junction, and then we've got an industrial complex as well. So those are the targets. There's the routes. Um, so a couple of fighter defences or rings. So we're going to try and stay out of these as much as possible. Uh, the flak batteries as well. Obviously, got to fly for a little bit on the route as well. But uh, hopefully minimise as much as we can and then sort of go out the way we come in back to the UK and uh, hopefully manage everybody and uh, ideally get everyone back safely. That's obviously the aim of the game. Um, we'll see if we can actually do it. So uh, there we go. I shall uh, go on to the briefing screen and uh, we'll be underway. So here we go, here's the briefing room, uh, reconnaissance file, we don't have any reconnaissance file yet because it's the first mission, um, we don't have that, uh, so what I have done, there's the map, uh, as I said, I'm sort of trying to do these missions historically, I think the next mission they flew was Paris, uh, there is no targets around Paris, there's a rail bridge I think here, yeah, uh, and I think it was some sort of uh, aircraft production facility in Paris uh, from what I've read but there's one down here in Tours so I was going to go okay the second mission we can go down here so I've done a couple of reconnaissance files for the aircraft factory and a couple of the airfields so for the second mission we will plan to go down there some way I will try and work out a way of getting there when we uh, do that one but here's the first mission to Cologne no reconnaissance file so we'll have a quick look at the mission briefing. Uh, so the rail junction is the primary target, marshalling yards are secondary, and industrial complex. I've picked uh, four or £500 pounds bombs and 12 £250 pound bombs. Um, you can select the audience you want based on the target, um, so I've done that. Fighter escorts, uh, squadron of P-47, squadron P-38. Uh, various information there, it's a rail junction, yeah, it's relatively medium. Uh, so actually the Martian Yard, ironically, the secondary target is actually high priority. So if we can't do this primary target, we do the secondary because that's a high priority. Uh, Cologne Industrial Con Complex, that's a medium priority as well. So that's all good. So we we'll sign that off. And we should be on our way. There we go. So B-17G, I was a slight discrepancy. I think the B-17G wasn't actually... Uh, in the operational theatre to about March or April 1944, but uh, maybe I might have been earlier, I don't know. So, uh, weather's not looking particularly good at the minute. I will try and manually fly as much as I can. I'm going to let the uh, computer start all the engines first because, uh, quite frankly, I can't really be bothered and uh, it's just a bit of a faff. So, let's just uh, get on to the next bit, and that's the taking off part.
Right, so we are at the end of the runway. I shall jump in the seats. This one. And that one. Let's get some flaps out. And all I've got to do is take control. There's the runway. Wait for the takeoff clearance. Do a quick flight control check. Should clear if it's a takeoff. There we go. There's right. So, and away we go. Not the tail wheel. Makes it a little bit easier. I've bound a couple of uh, buttons to my joystick just to make things a bit easier as well. So let's start going up. That's fine. So Anna gear's coming up, so that's one button. And start raising the... F oh, not deploying them. Let's start retracting the flaps. So I've set a couple of pitch trim buttons to make flying, manual flying a little bit easier. This is more for landing. And oh, let's try and get you into a nice attitude. And I've set some aileron trim. So again, this is going to be quite important. So when we come back to the land later on with a damaged bomber, um, often there's damage to the ailerons, uh, and you need a little bit of trim just to keep it straight. So I've set a couple of buttons as well for that. So that's it. Board of the rest of that. Let's give it to the uh, autopilot or the computer, and then they can do the rest. Okay, here we go. This is the last bomber forming up. So again, we got uh, six in the high squadron, six in my squadron, which is uh, I'll go run through the uh, names in a second. Then we got uh, another six in the low squadron down there. So this is going to be the interesting thing. This we're going to have to turn on a heading in a second. Probably going to have to turn right. Maybe it's almost 180 degree turn that they're going to have to do. So we've got to be careful of this. I do have collisions on. I know a lot of people don't like it, but uh, it adds a little bit of realism for me to a degree where. Um, aircraft can collide with each other. Now, generally when they're all working and there's no major technical issues with any of the aircraft, they, they usually keep away from each other and they're okay and they survive. Um, obviously, fighters crash into bombers. Now, you know, that did happen in real life. I'm sure there were mid-air collisions between bombers and fighters. Um, you know, it's just something that's that happened. So, I've kept it on for that reason, just for a bit of realism. Uh, and then hopefully we won't see any bombers crash in this first turn. There we go. Looks like they've just about made it. High Squadron looks okay. They're going to sort themselves out just good. So at least they've gone away with that. Um, so there we are. We're on the heading for the first waypoint. Now the first thing you need to do is the navigation. So we need to go to the navigation screen because the navigators in here are historically pretty useless. It's rather loud. So we now need to establish where we are. It thinks we're the south of the aerodrome. We're not. We're probably to the north. Uh, we can see here, there's a nice little town here, a nice little town there as well. I have a couple of rivers maybe forking through. So we know we're about to cross this sort of lozenge shape town, uh, which should be reasonably easy to spot. It's probably that one there. So if we just move the position of the aircraft over here, we know that's probably our actual position. So this is going to update the navigation. And then our first waypoint is over just to the sort of northwest of Colchester. Just zooming out a little bit. It's a bit more of a better volume. I think whenever I'm inside the aircraft, it's a bit loud. I might have to try and adjust that on the next video. Just reduce the volume inside of the aircraft, I think. Because um, it's a bit loud. Anyway, so there we go. So let's head off towards uh, Colchester. Just zoom in the time up a little bit. Yeah. 
So our turn's coming up. we got the, the height at 20,000 feet for this person. Obviously not going to make that far too close to make that sort of altitude. And then we're going to go in, enter Germany's airspace at 30,000 feet. And I'll come back to that in a minute of kind of why we do that. So there's the waypoints. There's Colchester down there. Actually, uh, dated a girl from there once. She was a bit of a nutter, but, you know. Essex girl, what do you expect? So again, a little bit of a tight turn. Try and want to avoid tight turns as best we can. Not too bad, again, like I said, when all the bombers are working. But as soon as any of these start getting technical defects or being hit or damaged, then uh, it does make the turns a little bit more uh, uh, risky, should I say. Right, so let's go back inside. So let's just have a quick look at what I've done. So what I've done for the navigation, I've basically put a waypoint before something that can be considered a very ob uh, obvious navigation fix. So we've got uh, the coast here, so we should be able to identify roughly where we are quite easily when we cross the, co uh, the coast over sort of somewhere at Harwich, somewhere around there. And then the same when we start entering uh, the sort of German airspace. So I've got a, a waypoint around here. And the, the point is, is that we're going to drift a little bit. We won't be exactly over this waypoint. I'm sure we'll either be a little bit south, a little bit north. It doesn't really too ma uh, it doesn't matter too much. But once we've made that turn, as soon as we start going inbound, um, we will be able to pick up exactly where we are as we cross the coast. So it'll be somewhere around here, somewhere around there. And from that, we can update our position. And then obviously that's going to update the navigation in terms of what heading we need to get to the next waypoint. And we can constantly do that as soon as we're actually over the overland. There'll be lots of things and lots of towns that will have funny little shapes that are quite identifiable. And we can update the navigation that way. Uh, the colours, so uh, it starts going amber when it thinks the fuel is getting a little bit tight, so it does do that quite early on, um, but it should think that we've got more than enough fuel to uh, get back to base. If it starts going red with a red hatch, um, it's it's not really happy at all. There's a good chance that we may run out of fuel, so there's always uh, an opportunity then maybe to land at another airbase. So there we go, that's the navigation. Let's uh, just zoom on a little bit more and uh, update the fix in a second, and then we can keep on going, and I'll uh, time compress all the way until we get into the towards the danger zones. Right, there we go. So we're just crossing the coast. I've just, I just realised the sound probably wasn't the first part. That's fine. We'll uh, get to the sound of the bottom so it's not too loud. So we've just basically got our position. We're just around Harwich there. And I've just updated that as well. So we're just literally off the coast. So I feel it's all good. So our navigation track should be, uh, should be good and true. It's going to drift a little bit, like I said, but uh, that's why we can cope with that. It's not a major issue. Uh, and then as soon as we're past this way, then we've got data again, which we're going to do some navigation. Yes. Good. So there we go. That's a quick navigation. I'll do it again once we're a bit further on. Right, so we're just inbound to the IP now. One thing we haven't, uh, we haven't been attacked by fighters, which is good. There's one little thing about the game, which I I do actually like, actually, the, the development. I don't really know if this is deliberate or if there's some sort of bug, but um, I haven't been attacked by any fighters, which is interesting. As soon as I've gone past two fighter bases, essentially, so I've gone past this one and this one, and, of course, we entered the airspace at 30,000 feet just to sort of mitigate then any attacks from either of those bases. So we had a lot of height advantage. We've descended down to 25,000 feet. We're now going in towards this airbase's sort of airspace. Uh, so we have descended. So there is a bit more of a threat now. Any sort of head-on attacks coming from this direction um, could be a bit of a danger if they're coming up. So there's obviously uh, risks of collision. Um, and the other thing that the game has done, again, I assume this is deliberate, is uh, they seem to have... Uh, I don't know, changed the colour of the pixels or done something. But I remember in the original game, when you had fighters coming in from a distance, you would often see them. You would see a little speck of black pixels just on the horizon, and they'd be coming closer and closer and closer. So you could see they were coming for you uh, well in advance. You knew that you were going to be attacked because you could just see them basically on the horizon or in the distance. This doesn't seem to be the case anymore. So I think they've either changed the colours of the pixels or the draw distance I'm not too sure but you don't actually really know there's any fighters inbound to your formation until they're they're literally sort of seen by the gunners um, so you get really last minute uh, notification that uh, sort of fighters are coming in to attack you I quite like that it sort of removes any apprehension or 
acknowledge that you're about to be attacked. You just literally have to sort of see how it goes. And, and as I just said, there we got some flat coming. Um, the two fighter bases we did pass up here, we didn't get attacked at all. So I've not been attacked by any fighters as of yet. So could possibly get attacked by some there and maybe some by there. Who knows? Um, and as we just come into the flak battery. Um, so we've got to be careful now. Because this is now obviously where there's a chance of being uh, damaged. And we've got a couple of steep turns coming up. We've got to fly through this and through this. So it's going to be a little bit of time flying through uh, flak, which isn't going to be helpful to us. Um, and obviously a bit of a steep turn there. And we could actually just change that maybe a little bit. Make it slightly less of a turn. But uh, even so, we've just got to fly through this and just see how it goes. See one aircraft there that's already starting to take some damage. That's that upon one off our left. So he's already pretty riddled. Uh, so we've got to keep an eye on these guys now because uh, they're going to pick up injuries. We can see here these guys, little ghosty figures on their faces there. They've obviously been a bit shaken up. Uh, oh. Oh dear. Oh no. So that was... Oh, they're bailing out. So there's a perfect example of damage and uh, then collisions happening. Um, probably a lot of people won't like that. They won't think it's very realistic or it's a bit of a pain. But these things do happen. Well, they did. Um, we saw these, these sort of incidents in real life. And that's our number two. So we're going to have to keep an eye on them. Oh, and there's another one as well. Let's see if we can bail those out before they all die. So, annoyingly, we've lost two bombers already due to the flak. Not good. Not a good start. I'll have to try and see who they are. That was Ogre's Revenge, I think. So, yeah, just one more to go by the looks of it. Just the ball turret. Is he going to make it? Yeah, probably not. No. Sadly not. There we go, that's a shame. So we've lost a few bombers already. Lost two from our squadron. Squadron, we've lost... What's that? Yeah, three maybe from the low squadron as well. Not a good start. But these things happen. This is the whole point of this. See a little bit of damage to the right aileron. And uh, let's just keep an eye on the crew. Not quite sure about the animations there. <laughs> Just pirouetting in some uh, German town. Yeah, they're a little bit spooked at the front. Yeah, they're not too bad. So the next thing we sort of want to do as we're doing this is we just want to keep an eye up to date on the fuel. So let's just go into the co-pilot station. So we got about just under 250 gallons. So we want to just keep an eye on the fuel state now for each bomber. Uh, because fuel leaks can happen. And it's not always a bad thing. You can usually get back on three engines without any problems. But uh, if you do need to transfer fuel, there is the facility to do that as well. The other thing you kind of want to keep an eye on is just... There we go. So we've got a lot of right teller on there. So they're going to struggle to turn a little bit, these ones. Because um, so they've obviously got a bit of damage. So we need to keep an eye on this bomber specifically. How's this one? He's not doing too badly. And no fuel leak there either. So yeah, we know our number two. You can see the ailerons there. They're going to struggle to turn a bit. Uh, so they may struggle a little bit turning left. So we can probably help them along a little bit just by making sure these turns aren't quite as bad as what they seem. Uh, so I tell you what, I might just extend this out a little bit. It's going to be a very short IP section. Um, but I want to make these turns maybe almost as gentle as possible. See so if we can do a quick update. It's not quite, can't quite see where we are. Yeah, there we go, lost two bombers already. Let's have a look, who was it? Uh, so there's 
number two, number three. So I think we've lost mother and country. I think we've lost them. Yeah, mother and country have gone. Um, most of their guys bailed out. I think maybe the was it the the ball turret maybe didn't. And Uga's revenge. Yes. So two guys on their first mission. Never mind. Most of them got out the the B-17. Right, let's just move forward a little bit and let's see if we can get to the IP. Right, here we are at the IP, so let's just keep an eye on our buddy down here. Going to be a bit of a tight turn for him, I think. Going to be a bit of a struggle. It's not too bad at all. He's not he's not struggling to turn to the left. He's probably more struggling to turn to the right. So again, we just have to keep an eye on that. So we've got to be really careful, the bombers. So they've just about managed to do that okay. Let's go back. Let's see if we can get a weather report. Cloudy is six tenths, it's not too bad. So I think considering the secondary was actually a higher priority, I think we should be going for the secondary, so let's request that one. Yeah, okay, let's go for the secondary. So we're going to go for the secondary instead now, so we know that it's just about there. So we just amend. Again, just trying to shallow these turns off just a little bit. Not too worried about the other targets, just interested in the secondary now. Keep an eye on everybody. Yeah, so he's okay. Can't remember that crew. They're still okay. Ah, here we go. So who is this? This is. Uh, I think this is. Is Tennessee Bell? Possibly. So I think the radio operator is probably the best person for the job. Should be him. Go and give him first aid. Probably no surprise he's a bit injured. Look at the state of that. Here comes the flak again. Good, so initially bombed is acquiring the target, which is fine, he can do that, let him do it. Looks like our four remainer bombers, all their bomb bay doors have opened, that's fine, that's good. The other aircraft seem to be turning. He's obviously struggling a little bit. He's struggling a little bit, but he's just about okay. Good, as you can see here now, they're just struggling to turn now with some of the damage that some of the aircraft are getting. Right, so let's get into bombing mode. 
So here's our target. I can't remember what orientation it is, but we'll have a look in the bomb sites. See if we can find it. So I think that is probably it right there. So if we just take manual control. So I'd say that's the target right there. And now what we've got to do is keep the crosshairs absolutely still. Now we've got a lot of drift there, I don't really know why. Of course the drift is this scale down here, they have actually got it indicated up here which is quite useful for us. And uh, essentially you just need to make sure you're not drifting. So the best way of doing that is just keep the points either at the top here or down the bottom. You just want to make sure that you're not drifting left to right. If uh, it seems like you are drifting one way or the other, obviously adjust it and then you just use your joystick for and back. Uh, just to then adjust the vertical sort of uh, displacement, I suppose. So that's not looking too bad, actually. You can see the drift is okay. We seem to be pretty level. Maybe drifting a little bit to the left. I'm just going to add a bit of right. And, of course, that's going to make the aircraft turn right a bit, just to correct for it. Somebody's just been whacked. Again, vertically, maybe just drifting a little bit up and down. I'm just trying to keep this sort of hangar there, this warehouse more or less stationary. Maybe a little bit more to the right, not a lot. Let me just adjust it more or less in the middle. That's not looking too bad. So obviously the main point of impact is pretty much the centre of the target. So don't forget we've got bombers behind us and the bombs are going to drop before the target and after the target. There's going to be a sort of string of bombs going through that direction. So again, it's a bit hard to see, but we're more or less, more or less in the right place. Maybe just drifting a little bit right now. Just a bit more left drift. Just fine tuning it, and that should do. Actually, probably a little bit further left, I think. And there we go. So we're getting pretty close to the release point. Again, just trying to keep that target pretty stationary in the crosshairs. Maybe a little bit drifting to the right. Again, just keeping it pretty stationary. Ever so slightly fine corrections. You just want that uh, target pretty much as stationary as possible in the crosshairs. We're nice and level, so that's looking nice. So I'm fairly sure once we release the bombs, that should have a nice little spread over this area here. Ready for cut. Bombs are going to go. And they're released. Alright, so the thing I want to just make sure is make sure that the aircraft are still going to turn okay and not going to crash into each other. Yeah, they look like they're okay. Yeah, they can cope with that. There's the target. And then we can have a quick look down here. So we know our, our aim point was about here. So again, the bombs should fall in this direction here. That's looking pretty good. Maybe just a miss, missed a little bit off there to the side. But on the whole, I would say that's a fairly good result. That uh, is probably most likely completely destroyed. So you can see the secondary, well, that was a primary target. In fact, that was a primary target over there. A bit more cloudy, so we chose this one. Slightly better weather conditions, slightly higher priority as well. So there was the primary target, which I think was a marshalling yard, something like that. And there's, there's the industrial complex as well, which is the tertiary target. So that's done. They're all looking good. So let's just keep an eye on the bombers again. 
these guys are looking okay. How's the fuel doing? Going just over 200 gallons. They're looking good. How are these guys doing? They're looking good. No injuries. Again, just over 200 gallons. That's fine. Mother country's down, sadly. Tennessee Bell, he's back up and running. So the fuel isn't looking too bad. Needle's just flickering a little bit, but that's okay. And back to the main ship, which is uh, maximum effort. Oh, how do I get back? Now the fuel's good for them. So all the ships are looking pretty good, so that's fine. So what we've got to do now is just nurse these things back. Um, just make sure on the navigation as well we're not doing too badly. What I might do again is just amend this, just so we're out of the flat batteries as much as possible. Keep the turns as shallow as possible, and then we can just skirt around here and then just head for home. So that's the plan. Where are we? Can we just give a quick update? Try and find out where we are. Ooh, a little village there, sort of amoeba shape, I suppose. Which is probably that one there. So we're probably just to the south of it. And there we go. Right, let's just uh, keep on going and let's see if we can just manage the crew on the way home again. Okay, so we've just started descending now, just started descending to about 22,000 feet again. This is just going to keep us out of the flak a little bit. Unfortunately, the high squadron there, they're still in it a bit. Um, but, uh, well, what's left of the low squadron? Um, looks like we've lost another one of those, and we have three, I think, but now we're down to two. Lead ship's taking a real big hit, right? A real big one right in the centre there. So I can imagine the um, radio operator, he's definitely probably going to need some medical attention, I think, in a minute. Even the Bombay. Well, Bombay doesn't look too bad, considering it looks better on the inside than it does on the outside. But uh, yeah, we've got pretty bad damage, and we've also got a lot of aileron deflection as well. So if we look at the co pilot, yeah, we've got a lot of left ailerons. So it's going to be really quite interesting to land later on. So we have to keep an eye on this, and it's going to be quite hard work. But, uh, so far, we're just descending out of the flak. Hopefully, that'll keep us clear of it. Uh, there we go, fast. No, no, it's still going. Number two's okay. Number four's looking okay. They're not too damaged. Oh, there we go. We got someone in the back. Who is that? Uh, that will be. And that is the Devil's Wrath. And the radio operator is probably the best person for the job for that. There was a fire as well. That wasn't ideal. Let's send you down the back to sort him out. Or the front, even it's the navigator, isn't it? Or bombardier. Yeah. And they got a lot of control issues as well. There we go. Keep an eye on these people. It's just worth keeping an eye on things, making sure there's no fires anywhere either. No, I'm going to bait him out or something. Yeah, let's keep an eye on. How are we doing for the fuel again? Just over 200. Uh, so maybe 300. 
trees a little bit more. Yeah, that's okay, that's not too bad. Hopefully he's okay, Dave Smiley. I'm sure he's going to see some medical attention as well at some point. There we go, he's okay. So again, the fuel's looking pretty good. Mother and country, obviously, fuel's not much relevance for them anymore. Good, yeah. It's good, so there doesn't appear to be any fuel leaks in the main aircraft. No. So it's just, it just seems to be flight control issues. Oh, there we go, some more flat coming up as well. Flight control issues, some injuries and stuff, but fuel seems to be pretty good. Alright, let's just get through that and uh, get underway and let's get home. Right, we're nearly there. Uh, we're pretty much safe for the fighter zones, I think. So that's looking pretty good. So it's sort of about to be over the sort of uh, yeah, northern coast of uh, the Netherlands. Uh, we've got someone there. Who is it? It's the radio operator, I think. Um, actual uh, the navigator is the medic on this aircraft. So let's go send him to the back. Uh, yeah, again, look at that damage. Not a surprise, really. Um, ironically, actually, I think we need to. Let's just move him to the navigator station because we do need to turn at some point coming up. So let's just put the bombardier at as the navigator at the time being, just so we can keep us up to date with what's going on. As soon as there's almost a turn to, to be happened. Um, yeah, if the navigator goes and sorts out the guy in the back, then we won't uh, do the turn. Interestingly, it doesn't look like this guy needs to, but if they do need to be parachuted out if they're, they're severely injured you can parachute them out as a as an act of humanity really uh, so that they could survive and become a prisoner of war whether you do that or not I don't know I, I suppose that was always a very difficult moral choice to make wasn't it as a B-17 bomber crew whether to chuck your best mates out of the aircraft just so they can get medical attention Hopefully it won't be too bad, hopefully it'll just be a relatively light wound. I do like the artwork, you know, there's a lot more detail now as well on this uh, Redux version. Um, I think it looks really nice, for, for a very old game, I think this cost me 12 of my uh, best British pounds. Uh, like I said, this is an old game which I used to love to, to fly as a, as a little bit younger. There we go, that's looking good. So I think this is pretty good. I, I like this game. and uh, I'm sure it's the, the new one that comes out. I'm not too sure my PC is going to be good enough to do the new Mighty... Is it the 100th? I don't know. I can't remember what it's called. The 100th. Uh, bloody 100th, I think it's called. That's obviously going to probably be a lot better graphically um, and various other things. So, yeah, that probably will be a very interesting game when it comes out. Oops. So at the waypoints, gonna make another turn in a second. Again, bombers aren't too bad. We've lost two of our squadron, we've lost four of the lower squadron. Not quite sure. I think it was a couple of collisions and maybe a flak got another one. Um, 
but uh, four out of our six have survived. Right, let's keep an eye on the crews. They're looking okay. Uh, they're looking okay. And they're looking okay, so good. So nobody else is injured for the time being. Let's just do a quick update on the position in a second once we get a bit further out. So again, there's another reason why the waypoint's sort of there. It just gives us a bit of time just to sort of coast out until we're sort of over something that's relatively identifiable. And then we can adjust our position there. We're going to skirt the boundary of the fighter cover there. If we were a little bit left, we might be a little bit in danger of getting close to that. But uh, I don't think we will. I think we'd be far enough north not to be anywhere near the fighter areas. Or close enough for them to engage us at least. Alright, so again, just looking ahead, we sort of see the peninsulas here on the northwestern coast of the coast of the Netherlands. A couple of islands which are going to be quite useful. Again, a lot of cloud cover, so it's not making it easy to spot where we are. But that's looking like a pretty identifiable place. Long Island, bit of a coastline, bit of a peninsula there, a couple of little coves. So I would say that's looking pretty much like it does out the window. So we are probably more or less there. I would say that's a pretty good place. So there we go, that's the navigation updated. So again, we're just going to coast back to the UK now. Manage our teams, make sure they're okay. And uh, treat any wounds as necessary. So uh, let's see if we can get it all back to base. Right, here we go is the English coast. We're finally getting closer. Uh, let's do another quick little update where we are. It's a little bit of a road or river, something down there. Where's the coast? A little bit of an estuary up there, estuary up there. So we know roughly where we're going to be. Looks like there's a river. So I think we are probably up here somewhere. Just need to double check that. Uh, there's a fork there, then there's another estuary. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a fork there. So I would say definitely we are actually up here somewhere. So drifted a little bit. But that looks pretty accurate. Yeah, there's a little river there see just going through a town which would be just off the nose there we go so a little u-shaped town so there we go that's the position updated again so all we've got to do is just uh, get back over at the airfield and rejoin there's been a couple of injuries on routes not too many nothing too severe most people have survived uh, the trip back so yeah one or two but everyone seems to be okay now so it's all looking good the aircraft still not too bad a shape Fuel's looking pretty good on all of them. It's just the control issues, which I think a lot of these aircraft, we can see the aileron deflections on a lot, are quite significantly uh, affected. So this is going to be quite interesting to land in the aircraft because there's obviously going to be a few control issues once we get there. So uh, let's just uh, move along a bit and uh, get back to base. There we go, there's home base again, back where we started. Minus a couple of bombers, lost a couple on their first mission, that's always going to be the way. Now we've got to see if we can land these aircraft. This is going to be the interesting bit, there's going to be a lot of damage, just be interesting to see if the gear comes down, so there's going to be some controllability issues as well. Just going to let the autopilot or the, the computer do most of it to start with, uh, so as long as they don't completely lose control. Uh, if they do, then I might have to salvage it. But so uh, we'll just see how well they do. Usually they're pretty good. Um, the aircraft has to be completely out of control for the, the computer not to really be able to do a decent job. But uh, we'll see how well they do and uh, take over if necessary. Right, there we go. So that's the end of the mission. Uh, I just time skipped the landing because uh, unfortunately aircraft were just going all over the place and uh, it's difficult to try and land four aircraft at the same time. So I just cheated. But let's have a quick read of the debrief. So yeah, Clint Royal Junction, that's what we did. We lost two 
two bombers. No fighters, that was interesting. So yeah, no fighters came up at all. Totally destroyed, which is good. Uh, what do we got in terms of uh, injuries? Uh, a couple of medium wounds, severe wounds. Uh, yeah, somebody's got a severe wound. Uh, somebody's got a fatal wound, unfortunately. I'm not too sure. That may have been a... Um, is that the, uh, the, the ball turret of maybe the aircraft we lost? But pretty good hits on the target. So there we go. Proof that it's quite easy to uh, bomb in this game. When you know what you're doing. Uh, a couple of losses. So what's that? Mother and country. There we go. Mother and country. They all bailed out. They're all prisoners of war. And Rouse, yeah, he had a severe... Uh, they all killed in action, unfortunately. Ogre's revenge. Never mind. So, yeah. A couple that have been shot down. Ten guys killed. We can look at the aircraft. Uh, these obviously would have made it. It's all quite dark, which is quite atmospheric. I suppose this would be at night. So yeah, a lot of damage to all of them. So we won't be using these aircraft, I don't think, on the next mission. We can have a look at mechanical file. Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of damage to a lot of parts of the aircraft. Uh, so you can change this. You can change it to routine, urgent. Um, I think you can just leave this, and I think it should be ready by the next mission. So um, obviously nothing serious for a lot of the problems. A few pinholes, and I'm sure that's the same for most of the aircraft as well. I'll go through those just to make sure they're they're okay, and then we can start looking at the next mission at another time. So there we go. That's all. Well, that is it, guys. That's it for. That mission, the next mission will be, I think, somewhere down in Tours. So I think the next mission for this bomb group was actually Paris uh, in reality. So it's up here. But we don't have any targets up in Paris, sadly. So I'm going to go for the next best one, which is then Tours down here. So we'll plan a mission and we'll do that. And then we'll come back to that on another day and look at that uh, next mission that we do. And then I'll obviously I'll do the reconnaissance for the mission after that as well so thanks very much guys hope that was enjoyable something a little bit different and uh, yeah let us know what you think and we'll see you soon cheers bye, -bye.